OLED. Let's see if we can figure out what's going on. Straight away we can see a little nick in the port and that is actually a bent pin that is likely making contact with the pin next over. So we're not going to plug power to that at all. Let's see if it'll power up. It does, so it still works. That's good news. We're going to have to disassemble entirely, change the port, and test from there. This video is brought to you by PCBWay. They're running a contest. More about that in a minute. That's pretty heavy duty adhesive. First thing we'll need to do is remove our shields. These little tabs bend pretty easy. You'll need to bend them back into place before you put the shield back on. Go ahead and do that now. And we'll need to do the same for the bottom shield. We have the board out of the housing. For your orientation purposes, we'll begin our work on side A. And when we flip to side B, will be here and we're set up to remove the port in order to remove the port i must set up my equipment while i set up my equipment let me throw up my expected temperatures for the job these temperatures are brought to you by the associate links in the description if you go to my video description and click on one of these links and buy any of this equipment a small portion of that purchase will go to supporting the channel and i greatly appreciate you it won't cost you an extra dime let's flood our anchors with flux flux can be found in the description and now we're going to flood them with low melt this will assist with not only getting the port off, but it will assist in cleanup as well. I do not use the hot swap method. It is a legitimate method. I just prefer what I do. You do what works for you. We really don't change anything up for our removal process. The port is different, so you do have to order the correct port and you do want to be conscious of these mounts. Other than that, same procedure. I like to use a port drop method rather than a pull. I think you get less trouble doing it this way. When everything is wetted, it will fall just like that. Nice clean pull. And while it's warm over here, we'll just go ahead and do some cleanup. You were greatly assisted by the low melt. Let's flip the board. Continue our cleanup exercise. No more pressure than what's required to keep the wick on the board. Wick is not a scrubber. The reason a lot of people use the hot swap method is because they're not comfortable with wicking. And if you're not comfortable with it, it's a good alternative. If you're going to pursue soldering at some point, you will need to learn how to use a wick. You cannot hot swap everything. Now grabbing our micro pencil with our favorite bent chisel tip, we're going to glide that ball of solder over the pads. We're really not trying to make contact with the pads and the iron. It'll make incidental contact. Like so. Sexy. Let's do a quick comparison. Far left is your light port, middle is OLED, and far right is your regular Nintendo Switch port. They're all a little bit different. PCB Way's sixth project design contest is underway. Head over to PCBWay.com and click the banner and check it out. Your submission could win cash and or prizes. Be sure you check out the rules. These are your judges this year. Be sure to check out some of the submissions. Click my link in the description and enter your submission today. Unlike the light, you cannot modify a normal switch port to fit the OLED. Same concept, ball solder on your tip and just glide that ball with the pins. Excellent. We are going to use our normal method for applying the port as well, but we are going to do a few modifications. I want to protect these connectors over here. I'm going to put an iPhone shield over it. Could be an iPad shield, I don't remember. We'll plop our port on. We also need to be aware of these mounts and this contact. Okay. And we're just going to bring up the temperature of the board enough to wet the solder on those pads. We will move the nozzle rapidly. It'll never be in one place long enough to burn anything, but eventually the heat will accumulate enough to do the job. Okay. I believe we've wetted. We're going to hold down the port, remove the hot air, and continue holding it down until we see all those pads dry. Try a, a delicate nudge test, and everything feels solid. Good. Check our connectors. 
No burning, no singeing. Excellent. I'm going to check this visible row of pins just to make sure everybody is solid. Sometimes when you're concentrating on that middle row, which is the important part, these can get neglected. But everything looks solid. Nice fillets. We have flipped the board. Add some fresh flux. Apply a fresh ball. Get things started. And feed in a generous amount. We need good feed through to the other side. Just check and see how we did. I'd like to see a little more on those back two. Just grab the big chisel and rub it in a little bit. See if we can get it to feed through. You need the heat to climb up the leg and the solder will follow. That's better. I hope you're getting value out of this video. If you find this something you're not ready to tackle just yet, just a reminder, I do offer these services both local and mail-in. Just head over to micromage.repair, quick free quote, fill out the form, and I'll give back to you personally. If you mention this video, I'll give you a 10% discount on this repair. This is the whole KY I use on the Benchtop PSU for testing. On this test, I just want to see some recognition on both sides of the port. It's not always reliable, so don't make any definitive conclusions based on this test. Okay, not exactly what I want to see, but try the other side. Eh, not so much. Now we're going to use our modified iPhone battery squid. It is the same connector as the Nintendo Switch original. And what we want to see here is just a steady climb and amperage with no hanging. Activate with the OEM. It looks to be booting fine. Let's try and see if we are docking. Sometimes you have to try it on both sides. And there we go, we're docking. The fact that we're docking lets us know that we have successfully changed this port. If there were any problems, we probably would not be docking. But we still have to put it back together and perform other tests. Before we can put it back in the housing, we need to replace our shields. You don't want them flopping around while you're trying to get the board back in the housing. So make sure they are secured. Like so, we're back up and running on its battery, and everything seems to be functioning okay. As you can see, we are charging at 15 volts, 0.32 amps. We're going to switch over to the PSU. PSU channel 1, 0.86 amps, 5 volts. We just want to make sure it's charging on both sides. It should be because we are docking, and we are. Excellent. Make sure we're charging our Joy-Cons, and we are. Excellent. I really like these screens. And we're picking up our networks fine. And Bluetooth is working. Excellent. It would appear our repair has been successful. If you got value out of this video, I think you'll get value out of this one. And I'll see you there. Mm -hmm.